Hello and welcome to my talk today, Introduction to the Print CSS Playground and Print CSS Cloud. I'm Andreas Zettler and a web developer for more than 15 years. And many of these years I was working with Print CSS, mainly with the tool PDF Reactor, creating product sheets, product catalogs and so on. And last year I started creating some websites around the topic Print CSS. And two of these websites I want to show you today, that's the Print CSS Playground and the Print CSS Cloud. And if you want to connect or are interested in chatting about Print CSS, then connect with me on LinkedIn. You see the link here on the slide below. So let us see what these two websites are. So the Print CSS Playground is an online editor for Print CSS similar to CodePen or the Tailwind CSS Playground, where you can edit your HTML, CSS, JavaScript online, and then you get your, in my case, PDF out. You can compare all the major rendering tools there. And what I mean by major rendering tools is the tools with a decent CSS paged media support. You can share whatever you create there with a shareable link, similar to how you know it from CodePen or these other online editors. The website is completely free and you find it under printcss.life. The other website I want to show you today is printcss cloud. It's a REST API, which I offer via Rapid API. It supports all the major open source rendering tools which are Page.js with Leo style and VZPrint. I also have a WordPress integration out of the box via a plugin, which I offer there. It's a paid REST API, which starts at $14 a month. And you find the website under printcss.cloud. So now before we go to the website directly, let's see a little more in detail what the print css playground is about so on the print css playground you can compare the antenna house formatter doc raptor which is basically a prints api then page.js pdf reactor prints itself typeset with leo style and vzprint whatever you create there html css javascript cannot upload any additional assets there like images or fonts. So these things need to be available in a public URL for you to embed in your HTML or CSS, for example, fonts, or maybe some logo. You can share the code, as I said, directly with your friends and colleagues. And the print CSS playground is directly integrated in two of my other sites, htmlpdf.guru and print CSS directory. Both are sites where you get a lot of different examples around the HTML to PDF or print CSS topic. So on html to pdfguru you get mainly all the CSS selectors and CSS properties as sample and can directly open them then on the print CSS playground website. We will see that also now when I switch to the browser and let's have a look at print CSS.life, the playground itself. So when you open this site, you get greeted by a business card example. On the left side, you have your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript. And on the right side, you have a live preview which is powered by page.js and below that you have the option to render your PDF with any of the rendering tools I mentioned. So when we go here in the HTML and for example, change the last name. So when we change the last name, we directly see it's reflecting here in the live preview and every key press directly get loaded here. So we see another test or when we remove the title, we see it without the title. If we now 
want to create our PDF, we can select the rendering tool we want here in this select box or we just press the plus button and it will be rendered with the currently selected tool. So in this case, VZPrint. So we see our output in VZPrint and if we change now, for example, to with Leo style, then we see the difference and the difference here is mainly outside of our document. So in the marks and the bleed area. Typeset, we see it has a third page with the put your JavaScript here. So apparently Typeset is one of the rendering tools which does not support JavaScript. So if we remove this comment here and go for the refresh button, we see we get only two pages now and in with Leo style and VZPrint, we have no change. We have prints, PDF reactor, page.js, where we see there's an issue with the external image, which is not getting loaded. Doc Raptor, and the antenna house formatter. So now if you did your changes here and you want to share this code and the result with your friends, you can click on the share button above and you get the code and the shareable URL. And if somebody opens that, he will get directly to this CSS, HTML, and the antenna house formatter will be pre-selected for him and he just needs to click down here and get the PDF. So now when we look at the HTML to PDF Google website and go for CSS properties, then F, and then for example, flex, we can check if this layout here, which you see here rendered in a headless Chromium, how the different rendering tools on Princess Live act for this CSS property. So we click on print CSS Live and you see the preview with page.js and then let us open for VZPrint and we see in VZPrint it looks pretty good. Go for with Leo style, same typeset, same prints, PDF reactor. Page.js seems to have some problem here. Dog Raptor is doing good. And Antenna House Formatter also has a problem with the flex property. So in this way, you can go and browse this website. You can check the flex wrap, for example, or shrink any of these other properties. This is a nice example, the direction. So when we click again, you see here the preview can open for the different rendering tools. You see how they interpret this CSS property. So here it's two pages. We didn't provide any at page. So depending on what the rendering tool also uses as default here, you have a different page size too. And besides this HTML to PDF Guru, there's also the print CSS directory where you get more samples like the print CSS features itself, where we can, for example, open the footnotes sample directly by clicking here on the live. And we would see how the footnotes are handled. And actually VZPrint, for example, doesn't have a footnote support with Leo style will show us 
the footnotes here with the sample footnote content and another sample footnote content. And if you want to compare that, for example, with prints, we see in prints the whole thing looks like this. We have also the numbering one, two there and PDF reactor is a slightly different style again compared when I go back to prints. And when we go to antenna house, we see again, it has a slightly different style and there or like this, you can compare the different rendering tools and then choose what rendering tool is best for your current use case. And the next website is the print CSS cloud where I already mentioned it's a HTML to PDF API with print CSS, so CSS paged media support. And it's based on the three open source rendering tools with Leo style, VZ print and page chess. You can select any of these with each request you do for the API. You have placeholder support. You can do some templating with Twig. That's um, the templating engine from Symfony PHP. You have an integration to WordPress already and um, with a free plugin and the pricing of this API starts at $14. So let us shortly go to this website and then let's go into Postman and see the requests itself. So the website itself simply gives you a basic sample, how much PDFs we already rendered with the API, the average performance and update, uh, uptime of the last 30 days, what's supported. That of course depends always also on the rendering tool you select, but this is the common support of running headers, footers, counters, cross references, then page margin boxes, footnotes with, with Leo style. The other two do not support footnotes right now. Page selectors, page breaks, JavaScript support. You have the integration, the WordPress plugin magazine, which allows you to create documents, PDFs, from single posts or pages, but also from multiple pages and posts. Get the pricing plans, frequently asked questions, and then links to the knowledge base and the other websites like the playground, but also blog videos and the directory. The knowledge base actually contains a lot of help for the rendering itself. So how to add assets, how to add JavaScript, how to change the renderer. You will see that now also in Postman. And if you want the documentation itself, you can go to the Postman docs under docs.printcss.cloud. And there you see a bunch of different examples and how to use them. So what do you need to send as body? So let's go and have a look in Postman. So in Postman itself, we have a basic request to the API, which is just in JSON with an HTML key and the HTML is hello rapid API. And if you send that request, you will get directly a PDF back. And if I saved it to a file, and go into the renderer and uh, the reader and open it. We will see the PDF. Okay. Then let's have a look at the other samples. So back to Postman. And if you want to send some CSS with it, the structure is the same. You have a JSON, you have your HTML key and an additional CSS. And when you send that, you will simply get a PDF back again. More interesting are the samples with assets. So 
if you have some assets which are not available on a public URL, you can provide a base64 encoded zip file which needs to contain all your assets. It can be fonts, there can be pictures, there can be additional CSS files, and you can refer to them in your HTML and CSS code with the relative links to the files in the zip. There's a maximum of 50 MB per request, so your body should not go over this limit. If you have bigger assets, then it's better to put them on a public URL, maybe with a access token so that it's only valid for this PDF rendering request. So as you see, we have the CSS, we have the HTML. In the HTML, we have something like the image tag with source mountain. And then we have here the assets key and there is the base 64 encoded zip file. Now it's a lot and then simply the JSON object closes. So if I render this, again, we get the PDF and let me save the PDF to a file. And let's go to the PDF reader again. You will see here the images which come directly from the zip file we passed. Another thing you can do with this API is pass dynamic content. So this is then this Twig templating support I was talking about. So in your HTML, you can for example, show the current time and date of rendering. And you can do things like make text uppercase and whatever trick itself supports is also supported here in your HTML. So if we render this with this curly brackets, now date time zone Europe Paris, then we get a document which has exactly that in the content. So again, we have a PDF as return. And if I open that PDF, you see that the document was rendered on the 5th of April 2021 at almost 1am. And the text, which is lowercase in my HTML, became upper text, uppercase here. So we see here this text becomes uppercase. And with the apply upper, we made it to an uppercase text. So you see that here in the body after the date. Another example is additional data. So when it comes, for example, to business cards or bills or any other documents which you want to render multiple times per data set, then you can do that. You can provide your CSS, HTML normally, and then a data array. This data array contains multiple objects with your data and your HTML gets rendered once per entry in this data array. So we have three entries here. So our HTML will get rendered three times. So if you want your HTML then, for example, to be on different pages, you can of course put the page break after or page break before in your CSS so that each of these entries in the data array is our own page if needed. So in this data entry, we have the first name, last name, title, email, and phone number of three different people. And in your HTML, all you need to do is you provide curly brackets, two of them, and then write something like first name or last name. This of course needs to match the keys you have here in your data object. And if you render this, again, you get a PDF back 
we save it to a file. And then we open the reader again. And let me switch the view. So we see we have our first business card, we have the second business card, and the third business card with the data replaced. So in this way, you can render dynamically. Of course, you can also render with JavaScript, and JavaScript is, for this API, supported with the rendering tools with Leo style and PageJS. You just provide a JavaScript key and your JavaScript code in there, or you provide JavaScript directly in the HTML with the script tag. And most important then is to change your renderer. So how do you change the renderer? You have the option to pass the options key and in the options key renderer, where you can pass with Leo style, page.js or vzprint. vzprint is the default and depending on what you pass, this renderer is of course used. Additionally, you can do also asynchronous requests. So the body is similar to all the other bodies we saw, just that in the options, you set the sync key to false and then you do not get back the PDF, you get back a uh, ID of a PDF and this ID you need to take and to check the status of your PDF rendering, you simply pass this ID and then if it's done, then you get the PDF back. Otherwise you get back the status either that it's still open or in progress or that it ran into some error. So if we also pass a non-existing PDF ID, we will get the PDF ID back, status error and the message that the PDF ID is invalid. Otherwise we just get our PDF back. Okay, then let us go back to the PowerPoint. So you saw the API, it starts at $14 a month. And it's a great way to use for with Leo style VZPrint page chess with the placeholder support, with the templating, and without any hassle of setting up these tools yourself. And you can actually try the API already by using the print CSS playground, so printcss.live, because there everything you render with these three tools runs via this API. Good. Then if you have further questions about this API or the print CSS playground, you can contact me via email on Twitter, Skype, or just create a ticket on the print CSS cloud portal. So thank you so much for attending this talk and I hope it was helpful for you. If you are interested in the print CSS topic, please join our Discord community. We have about 35 people there, all interested in print CSS and happy to talk and chat about this topic. And visit my other websites, so next to the playground, the cloud, the directory for articles that print CSS.blog and for videos print CSS.tube where I sometimes put some videos about the topic explaining footnotes or table of contents. Okay, thank you. Bye.